Welcome back to Harbor. Well, this week, Hillary Clinton has lowered her profile, letting Donald Trump bask in the spotlight, if you will. Since last week's debate, the campaign has taken a particularly acrimonious tone, don't you think? But two people have broken through the noise to deliver powerful messages, and they are two of Hillary Clinton's most powerful surrogates, Barack and Michelle Obama. Yesterday, the first lady delivered an emotional and searing takedown of Donald Trump for his recent comments about women. Here's a bit of it. It has shaken me to my core in a way that I couldn't have predicted. The belief that you can do anything you want to a woman, it is cruel. It's, it's frightening. And the truth is, it hurts. Well, her powerful rebuke quickly went viral, and the Washington Post described this speech as a moment in which the country had never seen Michelle Obama like this, writing, quote, Thursday brought out in Obama something different, something more personal, more passionate, more urgent. I'm sure it sounded like that. And anyway, today on the heels of his wife's speech, President Obama, in his own way, took on the Republican nominee. I noticed her opponent, it, he, he seems to be in the middle of the game making excuses all the time for why he might be losing. And, and, and it's always interesting to me to see folks who talk tough, but then don't act tough. Because if you're tough, you don't make excuses. It's amazing how everybody in both political parties, whatever you think of them, all drop their G's when they're speaking to us. Like, we, we need a little help with, the, with the, uh, the language. Anyway, for Barack and Michelle Obama, this campaign has become more than just politics. You can feel that. It's become personal. I'm joined right now by Colleen McCain Nelson from The Wall Street Journal, and also Fred Hyde, who's editor of the Washington Post editorial board. Uh, Colleen, let me ask you about this. Uh, why is it personal with Michelle Obama? Can you report why? Can you get into her head and heart? Well, she talked about how this kind of shook her to her core, the revelations of, of Trump's Access lewd remarks. And, and I mean, she speaks as a mom, and, and it's resonant. And it's resonant in a way that it's not when Hillary Clinton talks about being a mom and being a grandmother. But I think it's also personal because of the birther issue. I mean, President Obama and Michelle Obama took that very personally. It resurfaced in you recent weeks. You mean being called an illegal alien for, in, while you're in the White House. Ex exactly. Yeah. And and so that was, that was very personal for them. And so you've seen kind of a... Re a, a new energy, new passion from both of them in the last few days. Last question along those lines. Do you think Obama, President Obama, is counting the votes that are going to Trump and feeling every vote he gets is a shot against me and my legacy and, and my belief in America, really? That's absolutely right. I mean, he sees... He wants to reduce, not just defeat, <laughs> but minimize... Exactly. Trump vote. I mean, he's so offended by the potential of Donald Trump uh, being the guy who could unravel any part of his legacy. And he thinks that he has worked so hard to do the right thing, he can't imagine letting this guy <laughs> unravel it. And so you hear that in his voice when he says, come on, man. I mean, he basically says, this guy? Well, this morning, Fred, I got up and watched your beautiful lead editorial on the Washington Post, which packs a wallop in this city and around the country. The Washington Post editorial board endorsed Hillary Clinton for president today. In the editorial, the Post says, quote, we are not making this endorsement simply because Ms. Clinton's chief opponent is dreadful. We well, have made that point. They continue to say that, quote, her, she is dogged, resilient, purposeful, and smart, unlike Mr. Clinton or Mr. Bush. When they ascended, she knows Washington. Unlike Mr. Obama, when he ascended, she has executive experience. She does not let her feelings get in the way of the job at hand. She is well positioned to get something done. The Post also concludes that this year, eloquence and charm may matter less than policy chops and persistence. You know, like most people live in this city, I'm fascinated with getting something done. It's often more important than ideology. And you point out, if, Clinton, if Hillary Clinton doesn't have pizzazz, you know, she does have uh, the wonk's ability to cut and have the chops to decide where the opportunity is. Like a lawyer, I can see where to cut there. Explain why you have confidence so she can actually get immigration reform. She can actually do something on infrastructure. She can do the important things. You know, Chris, I mean, this election has gotten so ugly, and it gets uglier every day and frightening. Uh, that I think we do tend sometimes to lose sight of the fact that there is a well-qualified, well-prepared candidate. And that a lot of her past, I think, we think on the, on the editorial board, which doesn't speak for the whole newspaper, as you know, has prepared her for the kind of environment where you've got to work with the other side, where you've got to accept some incremental progress. You're not going to have a revolution, but you, you fight every day to get something done. Where in her past do you see that? I see... Uh, the ability to do things with the other side. Well, certainly when she was elected to the Senate, I think a lot of people thought 
there's no way she's going to work, especially with some of these Republicans who had just been impeaching her husband and trying her husband. And you, t uh, you know, you talk to people in the Senate, they, including Republicans, they say she was businesslike, she didn't hold grudges, she didn't care that much about getting credit, she wanted to get things done. And I think the same in the State Department. Uh, you know, you talk to the professionals there, like even the reset with Russia, which gets maligned so much, at the time, that was a reasonable thing to give a shot to, and she got something out of it. On foreign policy, her Russian views, do you think she's more of a hawk than Obama? And is that a good thing? Well, more hawkish, more active in the world. I would assume that the fact that they're uh, hacking her campaign and trying to get Putin elected is not endearing. You're trying to get Trump elected. Trying to get Trump elected is not endearing Putin uh, to her. I, I think she's. You mean that's not, it's a sign that they don't want her president. They don't want her. That's for sure. Because I think Trump is Putin's dream: destroy NATO, end alliances. He admires dictators, and I think Clinton. Uh, maybe a little bit more than Obama believes that the United States should be out there standing up for democratic values, liberal values. Do you think uh, uh, Donald Trump, you know, there are a lot of things he doesn't know. I mean, that's pretty sure, like most people, but he has particular areas of vacancy. Uh, do you think he knows how bad a guy Putin is? He just, uh, do you think he knows who he's up against? Because Fred lived over there. I mean, you know the Russian world over there. Do you think Trump knows it? He seems that these guys are not, if not the enemy, they're certainly a menace in many ways. He seems to be willfully ignorant about this. He, I think he's chosen not to know more about foreign policy and, in particular, Russia and Putin. And so uh, he he has made a point to not delve into these these intricacies. I, you know, I, I think it's a, even more than that. You know, as you say, I lived, I've covered a lot of countries, dictatorships, democracies, everything in between. And the key thing to a democracy, I mean, there's really two things that are key. You have an election, and the loser acknowledges that they lost, and the winner lets the loser survive for another day, right? And Trump is challenging both of those things. He's saying, if I lose, it's not legitimate, and if I win, I'm going to lock her up. So, so we've been saying on this show for days now. He, this is the Putin. This is the Putin model. I mean, it's not democracy, and I think that's why he's so dangerous. And I think it's why he doesn't see Putin as a bad guy. Yeah, Bhutto lost an election in Pakistan. They hanged him. Exactly. That's the, that's the Trump uh, approach, apparently. Anyway, thank you so much, Fred Hyde. Very important uh, endorsement today. Top of the fold there, right Thanks, up there. Chris. Anyway, thank you. And Colleen, as always, Colleen McCain, Nelson, and Fred Hyde.